leave meeting. Hello, everybody. Today, we are starting all over again because we keep doing this, starting and stopping, starting and stopping. Um, the Ogre Network podcast. My name is Ed, and we're with Aaron, the mighty what? Dalzell. You know what? I like it. I like, I like how that goes in there. I'm going to change my business cards now. You're going to change it to Aaron, the mighty Dalzell? Yeah, full <laughs> quotes, too. Full quotes. Straight there out of the mighty ducks. Like, you know, I was born and raised in Southern California. I'm like, just start working the flying V. There you go. There you go. I like it. I like it. So, so real quick, what are we going to be talking about here? Well, what I, I, I love, I love doing this on Mondays because I think the goal is just to kind of, kind of debrief a little bit, you know, like have people get to know us kind of, you know, the, the human stuff that we deal with, you know, that everybody can relate to. And then, you know, you got the real estate side of it too. You know, I, I think it's a fun place where people can get a good laugh. They can see they're not alone in, in dumb, crazy stuff that happens on a daily basis in their life and also in the workplace. You know, I think, I think it's just a great place to share and laugh and kind of get that weekend out and, and get the week rolling. Well, I'll, st I'll start with something really funny. Oh, I can't wait. And then, oh, you, you can't wait for this. One. So, um, now all of a sudden I've become a collector oh. of Legos. Really? <laughs> so so you, you two, my kids are also collectors of Legos, you know? So like, I did, okay. So I, so I bought one, I don't know, probably a month ago, right? Okay. I, like, what I, do you well, mean you bought one? Like one individual Lego you walked into or you like walked into the Legos? Like knowing you, you're like, okay, I could buy one Lego brick or knowing you, you probably just walked into like the Lego store and dropped like two grand and got like freaking like the strip of Legos or like, you know, like the so, Miami beach line or something. So, <laughs> no, <what> <laughs> not quite. What I did do, I went and I saw and I was at, I, I forgot what store I was at. And I walk by and I saw Iron Man. Okay. So Iron Man is one of my, I would say, shared for first place superhero of all times. Okay. So I got him. And whatever. And, and Amanda was going to put it together for me because she loves putting Legos so, together. Whoa, whoa, so whoa, like, whoa. So you're going to be a collector of Legos. You're going to be a Lego guy. You bought one and then you're going to have your daughter put it together for you? Because she likes putting them together. Uh, well, I just want to make sure I'm following this story. Normally, when people take up a hobby and start doing stuff, they're involved in the process. You're not just like the money man behind the Lego pal. I'm just the money man behind it, dude. <laughs> no, that's not a hobby. Man. Like, <laughs> and I like to explain them, <laughs> which you will see them next week in our office. So, um, so then Saturday we decided to spend the day with the kids. They wanted to go see uh, Spirit Halloween because everybody's at the Halloween and getting scared. Blah blah blah. blah. So in the process, Mercy's like, oh, I got to go to Kohl's because I need to return things. Right. So I'm like, oh, okay. And I don't know if you saw my video over the weekend, but I was actually in the Lego section at Kohl's. Okay. Yeah. So I'm looking through and I find my my second favorite together with Iron Man and Superhero, Wolverine. Okay, let me ask so you like, a oh, question. I got to ask you a question about your Wolverine at Kohl's. Did it say originally like $250, but today you get Kohl's cash and it's on sale for like $25? Because I feel like that's oh, no. The, no, it wasn't like that today. No, it didn't say that. But I'll tell you a story about that in a minute. So <laughs> I go and I grab it and I'm like looking through and I see, I don't know, um, Thor's uh, boat from Love and Thunder with the two goats. And, and then I see some Star Wars stuff. So I end up walking by and I'm like, oh, there's a big head of venom and a big Darth Vader head. I'm like, you know what? Let me get these three today. So $400 later. So I was close. Yeah, you were close. So conveniently, I get when, when we return stuff at Kohl's, they give you a little, hey, 20% off your purchase today because uh, you returned Amazon do. stuff. Right. So I, go, so I go to the register, right? Because we decided we're going to buy this stuff anyways. And we get to the register and like, oh, no, those are. Kohl's exclusives so you can't use them I'm like okay great so I get home and I watch a video and I'm like oh there's certain ones that are being discontinued so I'm like oh 
Let me look through the Marvel discontinued ones and, and the oh, Star Wars discontinued ones. Needless to say, the boat's being discontinued, so I had to get that one now. Of course you did. Of course you did. Logical. Logical. And then Boba Fett's throne room is getting discontinued, which I happen to see at Kohl's. So yesterday on our way to Scottsdale, which I'm in Scottsdale today for training for the next couple of days and stuff, um, and showing properties here to a commercial client, um, we were, I had to sell Amanda money and say, do me a favor, don't forget to go to Kohl's. <laughs> we need to try to acquire these before they get discontinued. So you, you are uh, in the Lego game. You are officially in the Lego game. Oh, I am so in the Lego game. I mean, one of one of my friends from Miami called me yesterday, uh, called me this morning and says, um, whatever, we were just talking about stuff in general. And I'm like, yeah, I'm starting to collect Legos now. And he's like, really? <laughs> At your age, this is the best thing you can do with your time. I'm like, well, it's a new hobby. <laughs> well, I mean, on, on the flip side, there's worse things you could be doing with your time. Correct. Correct. I still work. Now I just, like you said, I'm a man. I just do the to Amanda. She puts them together. And I have beautiful Legos that are put together. So your hobby is not so much Legos. Your hobby is more of delegating. I'm, I'm trying to learn. So I'm reading a bunch of books, right? And I'm reading a bunch that says it's the who, not the how, right? I so I don't have to know how to do everything. I just got to find the right people. That's hilarious. Huh? That's, a great, that's a great piece. When, how, when did you get that book? Um, I got that book about a month and a half ago. I was just turned um, on to that book. I, I I went the easy route. I shouldn't even say the easy route. I went the different route. I got the audio book on it. But that okay. book was actually brought up to me um, by my real estate coach, um, talking about one of the best books he's ever read. And so, of course, without thinking, I just jumped right on and used one of my audio credits and, and downloaded it. So I'm just finishing up uh, The Way of the Wolf. But that's next on my list. That's hilarious that you just downloaded it like Saturday, Friday or Saturday. Yeah. So so that was that was uh, that book recommendation was given to me by um, a mentor and a friend. Um, okay. And he says, hey, you know, we all try to do too much. So read this because it's it's finding the right people and making them part of your world and you making their world better that now empowers people to do a bunch of different things. And what I'm reading in the book is actually really interesting stuff. Um, and it's kind of, you know what, it, what, what, what it brought me, what it reminded me of was kind of what you and I are putting together. Okay. Right? So there are certain things that you're better at, better than, than I am at, right? And there's some things that I'm just naturally, I've been in the business a lot longer that I do differently and we just, and I think that we play to each other's strengths in bouncing ideas off each other and, and not only real estate businesses, but our, our other businesses we run by each other. And it's just, it's, it's good to have somebody to bounce ideas off. Um, and that's what this book is basically at. You know, I, there's only so much you can do, but if you find the person that can do it better and faster, bring them into your world because it'll make your world bigger and their world bigger. So, right. It's a good book, though. You're going to get a lot out of it. I love it. All right. Well, I guess, I guess we're going to have to start a book club. We should. We should. We'll meet, we'll meet at, at, this, at Red Rock and the Sports Book on Saturdays between <laughs> 10 and 3. Between the, the games, right? Between the morning <laughs> kickoff and the afternoon games. There you go. Yeah, we, have, we have a time. We can actually do it three times, twice a day, because we could do it. Be no, we can do it three times before the first game, in between the first and second games, and in on Sundays between the second and third game. That's right. That's right. And it is almost football season. Preseason's kicking off. 30 got, days till game one. We've got NCAA just destroying every conference that's ever been known to man. I mean, at some point, they're just going to, I did just like to just break it up into the East and West part of the United States. I mean, this is, this is outrageous. Well, again, again, it's it's the trend that we're seeing, not only in sports but in business and um, in everything right now. You're seeing people say, "Okay, I can't do this. 
how do I do more and still be effective and still provide great value, right? Yeah. So they're they're finding ways to get groups together and say, hey, what if we do this together? It's better than us doing it on our own. Right. It opens up right. opportunities for everybody involved. Right. Well, it's it's funny because I was actually uh, in the, in the book that I'm currently reading. Man, we sound like we're like super smart with like books that we're reading. I think just we just won't tell everybody how long it takes us to read the book, or in my case, listen to the book. Yeah, the, the thing says five hours, but I swear I've been listening to it for like seventy-two hours. By the time I have to hit <laughs> rewind every three seconds and figure it out, but. Uh, you know, one, one of the things that, that the author got kind of going on is, is that the, you know, three powers of, of sales and, you know, whether it's real estate or whatever, or just how you do business is, you know, certainty, you know, being certain that somebody needs the product or can, can benefit or have value, like you just mentioned from the product. Uh, number two being the trust, you know, like how much do you trust that person building that relationship? Like, you know, you and I have talked about for a long time, you know, like that's what, especially in our business, that that's what it's built on and kind of goes into that who, not, not how kind of thing, you know, you've been building relationships for God knows how long in the real estate business. And I have them in my other business that I'm bringing them over, but you know, that's kind of that second factor. And then that third kind of try that leg to that tripod being, you know, um, being a credibility, being a credible source, right. And being an expert in your industry. And so, you know, for us, obviously with, with you having your group and me having my group and now kind of coming together to make this ogre network, it's kind of bringing, a lot of the expertise that transcends commercial real estate, residential real estate, and just goes into life, you know, like, like just being able to have an expert in your stuff, but bringing, tying it all together is really funny, man. I had in my other business, I, I had a plumbing issue this weekend, right? And, and it involved a toilet and wasn't working properly. So, you know, again, going through, trying to find, um, I, you know, I, I checked the first box, right? With, with 100% certainty, I needed a plumber, right? So then I, I go to try to find somebody that I trust. I can't get a hold of my handyman. Um, they're not there on the weekend. And, you know, I start going through Yelp and Google and trying to, okay, I'll put my trust in the consumers that have trusted these companies. And so finally, I, I get a hold of a company that comes out and they come out on Sunday and I meet them over there. And, uh, you know, they go through their rigmarole. It's okay, it's, it's fixed, right? And, you know, we flush it a couple of times, all good, right? So now I'm like, okay, you know, the, the, the value was there. The certainty was there. We got it. I trusted you, you know, based on what people are saying, everything seems good. Now you get into that last box of being, being able to check like that expertise cat, that category, right? And so later that night, the toilet stops working again. So we're like, listen, we flushed it like three times and now it's not working. So we call them, they, they get out there today. And this is where expertise and knowing your field, I think, can can really just put the power and tie all three things together and make people want to continue to work with you. Or it makes you second guess everything you knew. Um, the not really the certainty because with certainty I had to have a plumb, but the trust you you can you can lose that. You can lose your credibility all in in one simple sentence if you're not careful. And, and so when the plumber came back to us today, one he says I got to charge you again because I had to come out again. I said, well, you only had to charge us because you didn't fix it the first time, right? So like that ain't gonna work, right? So we go through the rigmarole, talk to the supervisor. Yeah, yeah, that's no charge. Okay, fine. Then 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 the plumber proceeds to tell me that it's my fault or our fault our guest's fault that the that the toilet is broken because somebody put toilet paper in the toilet so if you didn't hear that when you replay this hit the rewind button go back 10 seconds to make sure you heard that properly the plumber said the reason the toilet was not working properly is because people were using toilet paper and flushing toilet paper down the side so where, where are you supposed to put it he goes well it's supposed to go in the trash can he goes, toilet paper shouldn't be flushed down the toilet. That, that'll cause a clog. I said, I mean, may, maybe if like a three-year-old kid or a five-year-old kid throws an entire roll down there. But I said, in an everyday scenario, somebody goes to the restroom, wipes their rear end. Where does it go? He goes, oh, a trash can. I said, you've got to be out of your mind. And so like that quickly, then I get on the phone with the company. I'm like, this is what you guys tell me because I've never heard of anything like that. So, you know, when you talk about all these things, like, in that moment, I realized I would never refer that business again. They lost the credibility. They lost my trust in them, you know, and if anybody asks, you know, and then I'm not saying I'm just one person, right? I mean, and maybe they, maybe I just got the, the, the bad plumber, but I'm not trying them again. You know, they've lost that trust. Their relationship is gone. The expertise, the credibility is gone. And so, you know, when you start to look at these things, like, 
you, you, it, it becomes crazy how fast somebody can destroy their company's reputation by not thinking things through and, you know, not putting value in the certainty of, you know, it's like you get on the real estate calls trying to sell somebody, trying to get somebody to sell their house that doesn't want to sell their house. Well, like, well, you don't have the certainty. You're not going to build any trust or, or value because they don't want to sell it. And they're going to devalue you, your company and what you stand for, because you're trying to get them to do something they don't want to do. And so I just, I find it interesting that, you know, it, it could be real estate, it could be plumbing, it could be whatnot, but it's, it's easy to just drive business away if you don't get to those basics and the who you know, not how you do it and trying to reinvent the wheel all the time. Like, just get to the basics, man. Be certain that they need your product. Make them trust you, build that relationship and give yourself credibility and your business credibility. And man, you, it goes such a long way and it's, you got to live and die by it, man. Well, I think that it all boils down to um, my favorite question on phone calls. Oh, I know where I, you're going with this. I know where you're going with this. Yeah. Like, yeah, you register on my site. Yeah. You've looked at stuff. Yes. I have your information. But how can I help? You? Right. Like if you're just looking because you're just looking and you're just looking and no need for me to push you into doing something. Um, if you need advice, then. OK, what do you need advice with? And if I don't have the answers, I'll find them for you. But right. it, it boils down to how can I help? Right. Because at the end of the day, we're we're no matter what business you're in. Right. Whether it's real estate or plumbing or electrical or whatever you do, uh, your question should always be, how can I help you? Because at the end of the day, if you can't help me, there's no need for me to, you know, I checked into the hotel yesterday and um, we, we drove for five hours. Uh, we get to the, the hotel, we're a little tired, whatever, from driving and stuff like that. And while they're checking in, I go and I grab a couple of bottles of water and I put them on the counter and I pull out my wallet to pay for the water because I was doing the, the guy at the front desk was like, I got you. That goes a huge way. Right. Like it's only two bucks, but it goes a huge way to make you feel welcome, make you feel like, OK, this guy's taking care of us. We saw him in the hallway. Uh, we came in, put our stuff away and whatever. And then we're like decided, hey, we're going to go have dinner. And he had given us recommendation for a restaurant um barrio queen here in, in scottsdale is actually a pretty good restaurant and uh we see him in the hallway and he's like hey um i'm just here to pick something up but i just want to make sure is everything good with the room is everything okay everything good with you guys i'm like yeah everything's great he's like okay perfect i just wanted to make sure since i saw you to make sure that everything was good we'll see you i'll be here till 11 o'clock at night you know and it's those little things of service that you're like well you know what that's why i go i come to these hotels well, and, and again, you're, you're, you're spot on because, I mean, you just roll back the example of mine when it went the opposite direction. I mean, this guy just hit on three points, right? Like he's trying to clarify with certainty, is there anything that you needed from him? And so that's his first kind of qualifying question, you know, is he's looking at it from a customer service point of view, which that's the business he's in. So he's trying to qualify you right away. Okay, with certainty, do I know that the Rossi's need anything? If they don't, great, then I'm, I'm good. You know, if they do, I'm going to make it happen. So with that certainty, he can go on to the second qualifying aspect and, you know, building that trust and building that relationship with you. And so since you didn't need anything, you know, you it kind of, he started building that trust and that relationship with you guys. And then, you know, he kind of put credibility in what he does and what that company stands for. And like you just said, like, I'm sure now when you go, like those, that hotel brand, wherever you go, tends to stick out to you that you'll stay at those places because of this guy because he made certain you needed something or didn't need something, built a trust, and then gave the expertise credibility portion to it. And, you know, it's like you said, it, it's small things, but it transcends the way you do business and, you know, the way you live, because now you'll forever probably go to, well, and, you know, the restaurant, you know, you probably wouldn't have gone to that restaurant. That restaurant benefits from this guy being really good at his job and going through his qualifications and recommending that place. And just like that was a great experience, you know, my plumbing experience, you know, now they've lost a customer and anybody who asked me for a plumber, you know, whether it's, you know, in the real estate industry, you know, we've got renters, we've got tenants, you know, we got people buying homes, people selling homes all the time. And now when people ask me for a plumber, you know, I'm not going to feel good recommending this company. So, you know, it's like, you know, you take care of those things 
you know, business grows or it gets, it gets hit hard. And it's just, so, it's just small stuff. So I have a question about your plumbing issue. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you reach out? Why did you reach out to me? So I could have referred my plumber to you. Yeah, I was in the heat of the moment and uh, I had <laughs> somebody who had my manager helping me take care of it. And, uh, it was just, it was, it was something we, it was back to school weekend. So for our business, we were slammed on the other business and, you know, it was just somewhere figured we just had to get going and kind of went that direction and tell you what, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't. But did they get it fixed? Supposedly it's fixed now, but you know, it, it goes into the, it goes into that other part, you know, of, of you know, conversation. And, and I heard something over the weekend that was, that was pretty good is that, you know, 80% of the message you deliver has nothing to do with the words that you say, right? Like, like if you think about I it. I 100% agree with that. So, you know, yeah. And, and so you go through, it's okay, so what does that mean? People are like, like what? Like, that, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, think about it. It's like, how many ways can I, um, you know, talk about something and using tonality? You know, it's like, um, like, you know, if you're talking about this restaurant, are you sure about that restaurant? Like your body language, their tone is like, you know, tells you like, okay, maybe that's not like, oh man, you're sure about this restaurant? That's awesome. Like, you're like, it's just that tonality that, you know, that's that non-verbals, you know, are such a big difference. And, you know, it's, it's wild to see how people can be so different and not pay attention to those things and how they come off. And, you know, this plumber, when he came back today, I mean, terrible body language, terrible tonality, you know, if he would have came off and said the same things he said, like, you know, maybe with a bit different tonality with a different body language, you know, we, we, I went straight into defense mode, like, oh, you want to go? Like, let's, like, let's throw. Okay. Let's get everyone to dance. Let's dance. <laughs> oh, the governor on the phone. I have the better business. You know, like, <laughs> you want to you go? Like, let's go. Like, I'll call somebody else. But it's like, you know, if you would have just came out with the right tonality, right? You know, it wasn't so much about what you said. It was, in this case, I mean, a little bit about what he said, but the way that he said it, too, it was just like, you've lost all your credibility. Like, your expertise is gone. It just, disasters but, yeah i think we're good the, the, the tonality thing though it, it's really funny because um mercy and i laugh about this all the time so mercy is is by nature a little more conversational aggressive than i am so that that that's a hey, that that's talking about using your tonality and, and this one may even be the words that's that's a it's a very good no, use no, of so, that so, so we laugh because we met 23 years ago working together right and we used to laugh because she would walk by the office in the morning, right? There's probably, I don't know, 600 people in this department or whatever. And she would walk by and she would be like, good morning. And everybody would be like, oh my God, what a bee. This lady. And I could walk by and be like, hey, F you and F you and F you. And they'd be like, oh, this guy's great. He's hilarious. <laughs> so we would always laugh about how people think everything I say is like off the chart great. And she opens her mouth. <laughs> she's getting attacked for it um, right? until you get to know her then you realize that she's a good person but it's it's the tonality it's how you carry yourself and i tell her all the time like it's 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 not what you say 90 percent of the time it's how you say it it's how you come across saying hey you know what this isn't a big deal or this is a big deal or whatever you have to say to make people feel comfortable because at the end of the day no matter what business forget about business just how you how you interact with people you always want people to always remember you as a source, right? As, hey, if they need something, they're gonna they're gonna call me. Some, and sometimes we can take care of it, sometimes we can't, but you always wanna be the source. And, and right. that's, I think the most important thing is we have to, in our business, we wanna be the source. We wanna be that if you need something um, in real estate, whether it's finding a rental or finding something, or even if you're an agent, right? That is struggling on how to get into production, how do you, could, we want to be the person you talk to and you say, Hey, how do I do this? Um, and we provide value that way. Well, and you know, I think that's what we, we want to do all the time. And I think it's, you know, it, it goes back to even the old school of script practice, right? How important are scripts? Like it's super important, right? We all know that. Um, but the tonality of the script, you know, I mean, you have agents that will come in and spend hours on the phone and wonder why they never have a deal, but they'll read the script. Like, Hello, Mr. Seller. Like I am so and so, and you need to sell your house. And have you thought about selling your house? I can sell your house. Like it's that tonality of that monotone of that script of that robot, you know. And like they they don't know their script well enough, so they have to read it 
And they said the script doesn't work. Well, no, it's the delivery of the script that doesn't work. It's the qualifying of the script that doesn't work. And, you know, like, you know, I've seen you on the phone and, you know, when I get on the phone, it's, you know, it's kind of that mirror and match as well, too. You know, it's like when you get on the phone, like sometimes I'll be like, ah, oh, you're another sales. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sure. I am. You know, like, what do you do? You know, it's like <laughs> if you start laughing and they're like, it throws them off their game because they want to be defensive. They want to They want to have the conversation with like, F you, I don't need you hang up on you. But when you start laughing, they forget like who you are, why you called. And, you know, instead of it being so much like you talk about how we can help others and you know that certainty of who we trying to help it's like when we stop making phone calls trying to help ourselves and we start making phone calls and prospecting and qualifying people on how we can help them i mean the game changes right it's like you know like if, if i call you and i say hey listen you know uh mr mr ed you know i want to sell you this this new truck right and i sit here and tell you why you need this truck and how it's going to make your life better that's all fine and dandy but you don't drive trucks, right? Right. So like, <laughs> like how much time am I wasting? How frustrated are you getting? You're like, listen, I, I'm not a truck guy. I don't drive trucks, at least right now. Like in, from when I've known you, you know, over the last few years, I've never seen you drive a truck, right? So like, so that tonality and that, you know, like coming over, like you get defensive and, you know, put you in a defense. Like this guy's talking to me and selling me something I don't even need. Whereas you get ages that like, you know, if you would have came in and qualified, found out for certain what you were actually looking for. And if I would have came to you and started talking about cars in general or how you're doing and then find a car that fits you instead of taking a car and making it fit you, you know, you might be more likely to buy a car or a house from me. You know, if I try to sell you, a, you know, get you to move and you're not ready to move, like, how good's that conversation going to go? And that's when agents, I feel like always getting frustrated, like, ah, the cold calling and warm calling is terrible. Well, that's because you're just not, you're not doing it right. You know, you're making calls to help you, not to help people. So I think it goes back to everything you said there. And I think that's got to be the mind mindset that people have is, you know, um, you know, you and I both belong to a networking group and, you know, our mantra there is givers gain, right? So you, you got to right. give, you know, yeah, you give first and then, you know, you gain later. And a lot of these people, whether it's this plumber or, you know, real estate, commercial, residential, as we get into it, so many people are focused on, getting first and me, me, me first. And, you know, they wonder why they can't get a deal is because they're so focused on the wrong, wrong thing. They haven't qualified sellers. They haven't qualified buyers. They're just trying to get them to do something so that they can cash a commission check and, you know, spend it somewhere. And that's the thing is, is if we're not constantly um, pushing to do better, um, for agents and not trying to do better for clients, right? So we're always looking at, I sent, I sent an email today to, to a client that we have a listing on and just gave him a quick update. Hey, these are the, these are the things that I think are important um, on your update. I know that it's a sensitive topic that we're dealing with, um, with the people that are renting from you. Um, but at the end of the day, this, I need you to know this is where we are. You right. know? And then what do you need from me? What, what, when do, what timeline do I have to do things so to make sure I can meet your requirements and not, my requirements. You know, it, it's the same thing. You know, I, I had a, a deal not too long ago that, you know, of course I was excited. You know, we got, we found these people uh, uh, an investment property and things were going well and you're getting close to the due diligence. And, you know, I could tell, they could tell that it wasn't the right house. And so we just pulled the, we pulled the plug on, it. you know, there was too many red flags and it's like, you know, a lot of agents would try to convince their clients to push through, you know, like they're two days away or a day away from clearing due diligence, let's just go, it'll work, you know, we'll clear this, this isn't a big deal. And you know what, like it delayed, we ended up pulling out of that deal, finding them something else, because we just, we went back to work, we did a little bit more qualifying found it on the property. We might have closed a week later, but the clients were much, much happier in the end product. And so taking that, taking that situation and making it about them, not about me or the agent, you know, what do you think? Like they're going to recommend you. Hopefully, you know, they'll see that. They'll say that if you're certain you need to buy or sell, you know, you can call Aaron, you can call Ed, you know, like they built the trust, they built the relationship because I was able to tell them, let's walk away from this. This doesn't, this is not good. Right. Because, again, most people are saying, like, no, just push through it. Right. And then, you know, you give that expertise and you give that credibility that, you know, you understand it. You know, you, you see you provide the value to sometimes you just got to move on. And it delayed us for a, a week. But on the end, right. game, the, the credibility, the, the trust, the relationship exponentially grows. I, I think you're absolutely spot on to all of this, sir. So I think this is a very strong start to this 
regrouping of uh, of these little sessions that we're doing. Um, looking forward to next week because I can I got a bunch. I'm gonna have a bunch of experiences from Scottsdale. Yeah. Um, are you you're gonna have some stuff I'm sure coming up from when does baseball oh, season start? Super pumped. We're gonna get we're kicking off baseball on Friday. Um, nice. kids, we got soccer, we got baseball going. So we got some stuff on the horizon, a little bit of a new squad. That's going to be exciting. Um, you know, it's, I think next week's going to be a good week. We got a couple, I got my real estate coaches coming in town, doing an education here um, from Arizona. You nice. went there, you came here. I don't know, see the writing on the wall there, buddy. Uh, you know, <laughs> I wish, I was, you know what? I'm missing so many things by being at this training, but I, I scheduled this training because it's a there. great trainer. It's a it's great it's class. A good and I'm like, geez. Um, but I have, I do have one quick question for you. Yeah. And this is probably the most important question. Did you yes. get the uniforms I liked? I forget which one you liked. The pinstripe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're going pinstripes, baby. Yeah, we're come on. Pinstripes. Remember we saw we were at lunch and you were like, which yes, uniform yes. do you like better? Yes, like, that's right. I like the pinstripe. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're gonna roll with our all blackouts, um, and then we're gonna do the orange and, and white pinstripe blue ac black accent. So yeah, they're gonna be sick. Are you gonna have to tell me when you play in the pinstripe? Because then I'm gonna have to go to that game. I think those are gonna be championship days, baby. Those are gonna be Sundays. Those are gonna be the Sunday unis, I think. Oh, oh, just let me know because I'll be there. I gotta go take pictures of those. You know, I kind of had a little part in picking those. That's so right, yes, that's right. <laughs> I'll be we're there. Pumped. All right, buddy. Hey, good talk. Enjoy uh, enjoy the rest of your trip in uh, Arizona there. All right, brother. Thank you very much. And we'll talk next week. Well, we'll talk next week when I get back in town. Let's do it. All right, All right brother. Later.